welcome to the session on internationalization from bottom up. I'm Leon, I'm the moderator of the session, and with me I have Anja and Crystal. And before we get started, um, just uh, two short things. So first of all, uh, when the two speakers will uh, share their presentation in a couple of seconds, you will have the chance to download the slides uh, right above the uh, presentation uh, at, the, at the download uh, button. And you also uh, have the chance to ask all your questions after the official talk. So we'll have a talk for 20 minutes. And after this talk, we'll have a Q&A session. Um, all right, without any further ado, I give the stage to you both. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you so much for this short introduction. Uh, first of all, I want to say um, welcome to all of you, and I op will open our presentation. Um, hope you can see it. Um, probably, Christa, you can give me a little sign. Yeah, it works. Okay, perfect. So, um, welcome to all of you. We are very, very happy that you're joining our presentation about internationalization from bottom up. I am Anja, and there you can also see uh, Christelle um, in the video, in the shared video. And um, yeah, we are want to share with you our experiences um, how we implemented and applied um, feminist participatory action research um, in our university with international students and also how we influenced or created um, how we inf influenced the internationalization processes at our university with, this, with exactly this approach. Um, so this presentation should inspire you and um, we, we are hoping that it's inspire you and that also invites you to probably reproduce a similar project within your university. And um, yeah, that is also gives you an insight of our experiences as students working in a project like this and that how we empowered our own and our um, colleagues in the master's program. But um, first of all, we will give you, of course, um, a context of our project. Um, how we are, how we got motivated, and as well um, how under which project we worked for um, implementing our own project, um, and as well as um, our understanding of internationalization processes at universities, as well as the situation, um, the initial situation of our own university. Then we will provide you um, some insights in the feminist participatory action research approach, and then we'll guide you through the different steps we uh, we applied or we um, in, we um, yeah applied this pro this approach and um, to our own situation, and then um, we will directly start into into a Q and A session. So we um, also wanted to invite you to make notes and write down your questions at the very end because we will focus in our presentation more um, on the methodology and how we implemented the project, but not that much on our results. But um, yeah, when you're interested, we are very happy to sharing the results with you and also have a, a discussion about that. Yeah, so just like Anya said, thank you for being with us today. I will start by giving you uh, the context of our project. So we are both working as student assistant in the Start With A Peer project. This is a peer project in which we are, I think at the moment, five students. We were more at the beginning, but we each could have the flexibility to conceptualize our own project as long as it was in relation to university political engagement and self-organization. And that it was also including some aspect in relation to stress management and resilience in the introductory phase of studies. This is a project that is funded by the Berlin Quality and Innovation Initiative. This is a really cool project, but sadly, so far, it looks like the funding was not renewed and that it will not continue. But being uh, working for this project allowed us to be paid to do uh, this research and the advocative work that followed. So I think it's a big advantage. And uh, we are also both studying in one of the two international master program of ISH. So we are studying social work as a human right profession. And being in this group, 
Well, first of all, I am an international student. I come from Canada, so I am personally affected by the topic that we chose. But it's also, I think the initial motivation was that we could see a lot of our colleagues were struggling with different form of difficulties from uh, at many levels in the institution. And then another motivation was to fill the gap from the Studi Bifra, which is a study that was aiming at evaluating the study conditions at ISH, but that was done during the pandemic. So there was no international students at that time. So the results they found cannot be uh, applied to international students. So our main objective was to document, render visible and improve the experiences of international students studying a full degree program at ISH because from our experience, our presence, needs, and rights are not really recognized at, uh, or not by all, at least. Yeah. And then um, I will go on with internationalization and the understanding we have of it. We use the definition from Jane Knight that internationalization is the process of integrating an international or intercultural dimension into the teaching, research, and service of the institution. And then another important actor that we used in our project a lot uh, is the Hochschule Rektoren Conference. I hope I pronounce it right. Um, they are a very important actor in internationalization in Germany, and they set a lot of guidelines or basis of how uh, the Hochschulen are supposed to act towards international students. And how does internationalization look at ISH? Well, it is described as a very high priority if we look at the website and also in different speeches done by the uh, university direction. But from our experience, we don't really feel that it is a priority. So that's why we did this project. And even though there's a lot of options for international exchanges with Erasmus, partner international partner university, international lecturers, and the two international master program, ISH still did not make the voluntary commitment for the national code of conduct for German university regarding international students. Uh, sadly, due to the limited amount of time, I don't have time to tell you a lot about this uh, code of conduct, but the link, if you download the presentation, you find the link to it if you want more information. Yeah, <clears throat> then uh, we directly jumping into our own project and uh, the conceptualization and the steps we did so far. So um, with this context, the internationalization process at our university, that is, um, that was really not in a good status uh, when we started our master's, we decided um, that we want to build a project that is changing um, the experiences that our colleagues and as well we are <laughs> also fa faced. Um, and that's why um, we got the chance and we applied for this to being part of the Start with a Peer project and um, then decided to work on the experiences uh, our colleagues and ourselves are facing. Um, I wanted to make sure there that I am myself not considering or identifying me as international students because I am um, in the privilege of um, speaking German and also was raised in Germany, um, but I had the possibility to work together in the Start with a Peer project. Um, but to really can, um, like to uh, create some changes, we based our whole project from the very beginning on the feminist participatory action research. Um, this approach was um, the, Nevidita Prashad, a pro uh, professor of our university, designed uh, an ideal map and steps um, that are guiding through the process and um, for us it was really that we, we realized that this project that this approach is really very fitting to our goals because it for, on the one hand comes from the action research and on the other on the feminist research approach and that it enabled 
us um, to have a critical research attitude um, which aims to change the initial situation and also includes elements of participation participation from the bottom up so it really fits um, to our goals to change something but also to base it on a um, scientific research that was really important to have some changes into the in university as an institution um, what was also was really really important is um, that the whole approach um, stimulates critical self-reflection and always included evaluation processes and reflection throughout the process so we always had evaluation and reflections not within ourselves but also with our um, colleagues that were not only considered as participants but as part of the research so i am in the next slides i will tell you more about each steps that we um, went through first uh, as christelle also mentioned we started from our own experiences um, we kind of um, build a network um, with the student representatives so we talked about our idea our concept and um, about the project overall and then of course we also set research questions the first research question was how do international students experience their situation at ISH berlin and the other was how can the study entry phase for international students at ISH be improved so even there you can see that our focus was to create a change and um, also to create for um, a community feeling by sharing experiences and come together and reflect on the situation that was already um, there. Then we spread the concept idea and um, also invited the, our colleagues for group interviews and uh, within the already existing structures, communication channels um, in particular. So we, what was also really important is using what was already there. So using structures that were there um, to base our research on and also to really um, provide as many poss different possibilities as possible to get part of the project. So we decided on having group interviews on the one hand, but also have the, an online survey on the other so that the people can choose the option that is fitting um, best for their own situation because, um, yeah, people don't have that much time capacities also um, because of care responsibilities or other things. And that was really important to provide different possibilities to share these experiences. Then um, we um, conducted the information um, with uh, two group interviews and one online survey and the focus was there mainly to share experiences come together and um, collecting ideas for useful measures and steps for improvement and changes um, therefore um, our main focus was also to create even there from the beginning on a community feeling and also um, taking common decisions about the further, further steps and level of involvement and the participation. So even there, people um, could decide in which position they want to be included in the project. Um, then we, Christelle and I, we uh, did the data evaluation um, based or followed the system, systematic qualitative text analysis from Cookards and transformed um, all of the inf information and data we got from through the group interviews into concrete needs and suggestions of improvements to answer these needs. And this was very, very important, um, especially in the advocacy, advocative actions after um, the whole interview, because then it was really, really visible um, what is needed and how you can answer it. Uh, it. And these ideas are coming directly from the group uh, of the international students. Then um, <clears throat> we yeah trans with this uh, idea of the results and the needs we um, organized another discussion round and presentation for cross-checking and the data we evaluated with our colleagues and um yeah also um created transparency about what we find out and um we also asked back if this is really what they said or if they want to change something and um 
from that on, we also uh, follow the two approaches that Christelle will also speak later, will uh, speak about it, to really um, build a community right from the beginning on and that every person felt um, part of the research and from the beginning. Um, yeah, and after this cross-checking with our group, uh, we did presentations and discussions about this result with other groups of the international master's students um, and followed then two, mainly two approaches, two different approaches. One um, is the community building and the other is the advocacy app advocative actions and networking and Christelle is, uh, will tell you more about the concrete um, steps and contents about this uh, to approach this right away. Yeah, so after having verified that our documents about the needs and how to answer that was corresponding to the four different international group of ISHA, we really focused on putting our results visible. And then it was also important at that stage to involve the persons that said they wanted to stay involved. And then uh, we collected the names and we had a few different meetings. And together we created an initiative for international students at ISH. And we went through the process of self-definition and uh, we decided together what the goals of the initiatives were and what we would do in the future steps. And then uh, our objectives are to have regular meetings to really keep on this community feeling and have it grow. And we also organized a trip to the European Social Work Conference in May. So we will be going with our initiative and other international students. And then from this community building, we are also hoping to have sustainability in what we started. So for example, for now, we did a lot of advocative action, Anya and myself. I think we have the privilege of being paid at the moment. So we presented and discussed with different stakeholders that have power on decision-making. So we met with the International Office of ISH. Um, it's important here to mention that they don't offer services for international students studying a permanent program or a complete program. So um, we achieve by meeting with them that the international students studying a full degree are now also included in the body program of ISH. We also presented to um, different commissions at ISA and are now still in contact with one of the two pro rectorin uh, At the moment, a big focus is more on translation and ensuring that we have access to information in English. Uh, and then um, we also achieved a big, um, a big step. We have two members of the international uh, initiative that are now on the student parliament and it's the first time that international students are elected and part of the politic side of the ISH and we've been working on promoting the visibility of the initiative and also the results of the research to again try to achieve changes and we've been putting a lot of effort on networking and getting involved with other or self-organized bodies of ISH because one of the results that came uh, from our research was that we don't know how to participate or how to get involved. So it was really important to create connections that we now hope to pass along to the different members of the initiative. And um, that leads us to what is our current status and um, as I said we are trying to promote the expansion of the International Student Initiative. So we're trying to reach out to more persons to get more members because we think right now we are two that are paid for doing a lot of the advocacy actions. But if we get a bigger group of students, then it's less work for everyone and then it has a better chance of surviving in the future and also to keep on achieving changes because so far we see um, we see there's a lot of positive 
coming from our project and we hope it will continue but we also still have a lot of work so we keep on meeting with the university management and we're trying to get an automatic translation process to be institutionalized and then two other uh, focus we have right now is to build partnership to try to improve the support for international status concern because arriving as an international student in Germany comes with extra challenging than extra challenges than just uh, studying in university because there's also all the accommodation, the just knowing how the German academic system works, for example. But all of that at the moment is not really covered because, as I said, the international office is not. A, responsible for students studying a full program at ISA, but the international ones. And then our last objective right now is to really pressure the management to sign the national code of conduct or to start an international audit. And again, because of the time, I don't really have time to give you more information about these two um, processes, but they are both coming from ARK. So if you want more, you can again go on their website to know more about it but very shortly they would force the university to make some changes because they would have to respect the the rights that are put in these documents yeah so we really hope that it gives you some inspiration to maybe create a similar project or to at least um be aware that this approach is existing and we think that it can really be transposed to other vulnerable groups or maybe international students in your own university so we are now happy to answer any question yeah thank you so much for listening and um, we are very happy to come to a q a session and um, yeah receiving questions and feedback from your side and yeah. <laughs>